My name is Nick Novello. I had the privilege of speaking before the Dallas City Council in August of 2017, where I stated that the city no longer had a viable policing function. One year later, we've come to a place where it's not only a, a fact of not having a viable policing function, we've come to a place where we understand we don't have a viable fire function, fire department function. We have a compromised sanitation department. We have streets in need of tens of millions of dollars in repair. And that all begs one question. Folks, please listen to what I'm trying to share. Dallas is awash in commercial real estate money. We've got approximately 1.4 million people living here. And let me qualify something. I address this to you, Mr. Kleinman, because you seem to be driving the city's narrative, and I want to respond to that. You're on record, sir, saying you don't want to speak to an association head. You just want to speak to a regular officer. So that's me. Let me make you comfortable, Mr. Kleinman. If you want to have this conversation up north among your constituents, I'll come by myself and we can have the conversation. That's what you seem to have alluded to. But I want to make a point that I think drives this entire conversation from the time I first spoke in August of 2017. And here's the point. Dallas is awash in commercial real estate development money. We have close to 1.4 million people living in Dallas. And I believe, and so I'll affirm here now, Dallas is sitting on hundreds of millions of dollars in funds that the public knows nothing about. L let me make a point. I, I address this to Councilman Kleinman and Mayor Rollins because Mayor, your tactics of trying to frighten the public by saying things like if you raise the salaries for police and fire, there'll be subsequent layoffs. There's going to have to be tax increases to pay additional salaries. That's absolutely disingenuous. And let me say it's contemptible. The citizens in this city are paying some of the highest tax rates in the country. Now, I have to reference something that Councilman Grigg said yesterday on the Rick Roberts show. He literally said that there was slush fund money in the form of water department funds. That's what this man said. He was very blunt, very honest. Now, if we're awash in all these monies coming in, and yet our streets are in disrepair, our firefighters work out of stations that are toxic, deadly in some instances, squad cars that are antiquated, well over 100,000 miles per squad car, city services that are really non-existent. It begs a number of questions. Where are these monies going? Now, I understand and I want to qualify something. I'm not ascribing criminal behavior to anyone because the way the city is set up in the charter, it's my understanding you can do what you want to do with the funds coming in. But Mr. Kleinman, I want to make a point to you, sir, because you said that we need to man up, so to speak, and live with the contractual instruments in place. Well, Mr. Kleinman, how about the obligations you have to your citizens? Are you meeting those? I think not. I think the city is criminally negligent in not meeting those obligations. And Mayor, when you say that there'll be layoffs as a result of giving any type of pay increase, and so you frighten your tax base, let me share something with the folks in terms of being frightened. This is so important, folks, because what drives my narrative is the fact that you're not getting any real-time policing to your emergency calls. I've got hundreds and hundreds of calls, and I won't belabor this, but hundreds of calls where the entry is call expired, no elements available. And I'm talking about shootings, home invasions, children crying and screaming, but we don't respond. Well, we can't even take care of ourselves. Police cannot take care of fire. Where does that leave you, citizen of Dallas? I don't want to belabor this, but I want to make this point. 
you're being played. It doesn't matter what you voted these people in for. You know what's happened here? We've got executive fiat leading this city. We do not have representative government in Dallas, Texas. There's a you and cry right now for changes, for more police, more fire, and the city council is absolutely adamant that this will not happen. My question to you, Mr. Broadnack, city manager, are you planning on balancing this budget with the blood of the citizens of this city? Because that's where we're going. And if you think that sounds dramatic, let me tell you something. In the last two years, we've buried six Dallas officers. We've got two hurt badly. I had someone I work with take his own life. None of that is spoken to. Your problem downtown is you continue to make an academic argument over something costing us lives. The people that live and die and pay taxes in this city have been betrayed by those elected to look after their interest. And so let me leave you with this. I went and had a conversation with Mayor Rollins and it left me incredulous that that man could blow off some of the sheets I showed him shootings, woman with a knife, a real threat to take a life, no police response. And that's not part of the narrative. H how dare you be and show so much contempt for those dependent upon your leadership? Because that's what you've done right now. When you drive this faux narrative that everything is copacetic and we've got the pieces in place, to meet the needs of the citizens, you show them contempt. That's what you're doing. You know, people ask me why I speak. I'll tell you why. One of the reasons I speak is because I know it's the right thing to do. We speak the truth. This narrative is far greater than one person. And if I'm wrong, I ought not to be employed here. But let me wind it up. Mr. Kleinman, I need to ask you this question because you speak with a lot of sagacity. One would assume so. You're on the city council. You are a very successful business person. How in the world did you miss all the red flags associated with Caraway's activities? Moreover, you endorsed those activities, those initiatives, when you voted them in. Did you not vet those things, sir? How many red flags are going to be ignored regarding DPD, the fire department, in the lives of those being hurt and lost before there are material changes. Because that's where we are right now. I'm not making an academic argument. What I'm talking to is happening on the streets of Dallas every day. I leave you with that, Mr. Kleiman. And you asked for a conversation with someone who's not in a leadership position with one of our associations. Here I am, Mr. Kleiman, so I'm waiting for your invitation. Thank you for your time.